Okay, so in this problem we are asked indirectly about the velocity of the moon. The way it's phrased is the next um, total solar eclipse in the continental United States is in 2024. The figure shows its path of totality. The path of totality is where the moon's shadow completely covers a small portion of the Earth's surface. Based on what we have learned about gravitation and circular orbits, how much later does the onset of totality begin in Buffalo as compared to Piedras Negras? And we're given the distance as 1,880 kilometers. That's the only value you need from that statement. Um, we can also acknowledge that, conceptually, the velocity of the moon's shadow okay, moon's shadow is equal to the velocity of the moon. Okay, and that velocity, okay, is going to be the distance over the time, obviously. And specifically, that's going to be 1,880 um, meters, we'll convert, so times 10 to the 3 meters, and then divided by the value that we're looking for, which is t. Okay. So we are um, searching to find that time. How, you know, the, um, how much time does it take? Right? How much later? Right? Cause we're based on this, circular orbits, how much later? So that's the statement. Okay, the onset of totality. Okay, well, we have to now consider circular motion and universal gravitation to answer this question. So we'll continue with our variable v. Okay, so the thing we're trying to solve for. And we know that that's um, going to be equal, in addition to the distance over time, the thing we're actually trying to solve, it's going to be equal to the circumference of the moon's orbit um, divided by the period of the moon's orbit, because that's going to be distance over time again. It's the same velocity. So there's two, key, two pieces of information that we needed in the problem that weren't stated in the problem itself, um, and you were expected to look them up, and that is um, the period of the moon here and the mass of the Earth. So we will move forward with that information, with the assumption that it's been looked up, and the, the values are stated there. Okay, so the velocity is going to be 2 pi, and this is going to be r for the moon, okay? And we'll put, I'll put me to make it clear it's the radius of the moon-Earth orbit, okay? And here I've drawn a, fig um, a figure that shows just uh, the what the you know the kind of the radius looks like, uh, not to scale. All right, so we've got so that's going to be our circumference, and that's going to be divided by the period. Okay, and this is the period of orbit for the moon. Okay, so. Uh, what we want to do now is um, relate that velocity to um, the centripetal force, which is the gravitational force. Okay, so before we plug in numbers, let's do that. So what we have here is that the gravitational force is the gravitational constant times the mass of Earth, okay, times the mass of the moon, it's uppercase m. All right, and then that's going to be divided by the radius squared. All right, and that's equal to the centripetal force, which is going to be the mass of the moon, the free body, and then the velocity 
of the moon, okay, right over here, um, and divided by r. Okay, so what we've done here is we've wrote the um, the velocity based on just circumference over period, but then we've also can um, related velocity squared here um, to the force, right? Absolutely, to the force. Um, and so we're going to um, unite these two equations um, because one thing um, is that we can then solve for the velocity of the moon um, just knowing the information we have, the period and the mass of the Earth. In other words, we can solve for the radius in terms of the mass of the Earth and the period of the moon and then uh, solve for the velocity uh, subsequently. Um, so let's let's go ahead and um, do some algebra here to solve for the radius um, and then uh, substitute it back into our velocity equation. Okay. So using universal gravitation, um, I'm going to write that. Okay, R M E is going to be G mass of the Earth divided by the velocity of the moon squared. Okay, so the idea here is I cross multiplied both sides by an RAM squared, um, which would have canceled out one of them then. Um, this would only leave me with the G over ME on that side, and I divided both sides by um, the velocity squared. Okay, so now I have an expression just um, for the radius of orbit of the moon. All right, so we're going to substitute that in here. All right, so then that's where I have Vm is 2 pi g m e. Okay. And then v squared over period. V m squared. There we go. All right. So then the velocity of the moon, because we can cross multiply again here, and we get a cubed. Okay. Is going to be 2 pi, gravitational constant, mass of Earth, and then all over the period of the moon. All right, let's plug in some values. So. 2 pi, and I'm going to make some space here for the cube root. All right, so 2 pi, and then we've got 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 um, for the gravitational constant, uh, which has units of newtons per kilogram squared. Um, with, of course, a meter squared up top. Okay, and then we got the mass of the Earth, so uh, 5.972, 24 kilograms, okay, and then our period, uh, which was, we had as 27.32 days, or 27.322 days, okay, multiply, 365. Um, oh, <laughs> wasn't in the years. All right, so uh, 24 hours in a day, and 60 minutes in an hour, and 60 seconds in a minute. Okay. And of course, that gets us units of seconds. All right. So let's see what value we get. All right. So two. Psi and then pi, 6.67. Times ten. All right, and then 
negative 11. All right, um, and then we're multiplying that not by eight, but by, okay, um, 5.972 to the 24th power, all right. There we go. Not four, 24. Okay, and then we can close parentheses on the top there. All right. And open up on the bottom. Um, okay, our number of days. And then we're just going to be multiplying that a few times over by 24, 60, and 60, or we could have just done 3,600, which is 60, 60 squared. Okay. All right. Okay, got the wrong negative there. There we go. Okay. All right, so my value came out too big because I forgot a key step. I forgot the cube root here. So let's add that. That's why you know we have to get a smaller value than something in the uh, hundreds of millions. Okay, so let's um, we're gonna put in, we'll put that parenthesis back, and then insert one here. Okay, and then we'll go to the end of the expression. Cap the whole thing with parentheses. Okay and then raise it to the one-third power to get the cube root, all right? Well, here, I, it's already going to be all, there we go, in the exponent, the one-third. Okay, there we go. So the value we get is 1,020, uh, if we're sticking with four significant figures, and that's meters per second. Okay. And that's the interesting part. Of course, we did. Uh, we were asked to do something with that velocity, and that was find the, the time for the you know solar eclipse to move from one city to another, um, which is interesting in its own right, to kind of get you an idea of that, you know, the length of the day of, of people seeing the event. Okay. So we're going to go back up to this expression up here and solve for t. So then t is going to equal the distance divided by velocity, which will be 18, 1,880 kilometers, okay? And then our obtained velocity, okay? All right, so let's do that. Let's put in the number that we were given here, okay? and convert it to meters. Mm -hmm. And then just divide by a result from above. There we go. And that's the number of seconds. So let's divide that by 60. Now we got minutes, all right. So it looks like it's uh, 30, 30 minutes is the time, right? Because we have it moving, um, you know, about a, a you know, thousand um, or one meter per second, and it has to travel um, 1,800, right? So obviously we're just going to basically get that number of, uh, of seconds. And so then if we just think about, yeah, so 30 minutes, 1,800 seconds, okay? Thirty point seven three minutes. All right, so not a lot of time um, to go. Uh, you know, a few thousand uh, kilometers, or you know, just under two thousand kilometers. 
Uh, but, of course, the moon is moving very quickly. All right. Although not as quickly as satellites that are lower, uh, because you know even here when we saw um, that when we solved for velocity, of course here we don't see the relationship with uh, with the radius, but here we do. We can see that it's you know inverse, inversely proportional to the radius. All right. Thank you.